Hey, welcome back to my channel. In the last video, my partner Belen and I unboxed these Two Terrain Outback Explore 29 bikes. And in this video, it's going to be just me, and I'm going to be accessorizing my Outback and tell you a little bit about what the designers came up with in the process of creating this bike and why it is one of the most reliable travel bikes in the industry. As mentioned also in the last video, this year Belen and I are partnering with Two Terrain and Gates and Pinion and so this video is brought in collaboration with them. So let's get right into it. I want to point out a few things on this bike, starting with the choice of bolts that the designers and engineers at Two Terrain came up with in the making of this bike. Then the rear rack mount, the fork mount for the fork packs that we're using from Ortlieb, the Pinion C112 gearbox, and namely why we didn't choose the P118 gearbox that they also provide at Two Terrain in the configurator on the website for this bike. Then the tools that we're taking along, and also some quick notes on repairs and replacements, such as the gates uh, belt that we're taking along as a spare and the do's and don'ts of this thing. So let's get started with the bolts, the rear rack mount and the fork mount, because those three go hand in hand. The thing is, when you order the Outback uh, off of Tutterrain's website, in the configurator you actually have a choice to let a, a rack, a tubus rack, be pre-mounted for delivery. And this is a really handy option in case you don't own a rack yet, because the bolts that you need to install the rack come pre-installed. And they are a different size bolt than anywhere else on the bike. They're M6 instead of M5. Basically, it means that the screw thread is a little bit bigger, and so you need a bigger bolt. If you're gonna install your rack, then you're gonna have to get two M6 bolts that you can then put in the rear rack mount on this bicycle. It's fairly straightforward. The only thing you're gonna have to look out for is that the threads have a bit of paint to prevent corrosion, just in case you're not gonna use a rack. And so the tightening of the bolt is going to be a little bit difficult at first hand. Afterwards, the paint comes off and it becomes much easier. Now, when you compare this fork with other forks that we've used in the past, this one is a little bit of a different story because it's the sink uh, carbon fork that comes as standard on the Two Terrain Outback. And the thing is that the size, the thickness of the fork dwindles the lower you go to where the wheel is installed. There is a receiving bit on the inside of the fork and a bolt on the outside of the fork, tightening whatever mount or bottle cage you're gonna put on it. But because the thickness is a little bit less on the bottom and a little bit more on the top, you're gonna need different lengths bolts in order to install what you want to install. So in our case, we are installing the uh, fork mounts from uh, the fork packs from Ortlieb and they require two different size bolt lengths. So just to know, if you're going to use this fork with a mount or a rack, you're going to need different size bolts and you might not be able to use the bolts that come pre-installed. And finally, we have the bolts that come pre-installed on the Outback frame. Now these are button head M5 size bolts and they're mostly used for aesthetical reasons, I've been told. I like using socket cap bolts in M5 size because the Allen key sits a little bit deeper in them and I just find them a little bit more functional. So I'm going to be installing a mount here for the bottle of alcohol that we use for cooking and I'm going to install it with socket cap bolts. Otherwise, these are perfectly functional, the button heads. Uh, they're a little bit uh, uh, on the short size and so depending on what you're going to install, they're going to work or not. But it's good to know that you need a few more bolts at hand just in case you want to install something that requires a bit more thickness and a longer bolt. And then there is the Pinion C112 gearbox and the question, why didn't we choose the P118 that you can also choose in the Outback configurator? And the thing is, this gearbox, the C112, comes in at 2100 grams and the P118 at 2800 grams. That's the main reason for us. The weight saving is important, hence our carbon fork. Other than that, the two gearboxes are catering for different riding styles, so the P118 is the top of the line model. It is the sturdiest and it is meant for long-term touring. That is really where it comes to shine. But those 2800 grams for us made it 
slightly less attractive than the more all-rounder C112. This one is meant for all kinds of riding conditions and of course keeps up just like the other pinion gearboxes. And the truth is with pinion there's really no way to go wrong because all these gearboxes are amazing and in every single case better than a derailleur setup. And these are the tools that I'll be taking with me on every single journey from now on. However, this one is not coming along. It's the Pinion uh, spare part box for the gearbox that got sent out to us by Pinion. But the gearboxes are supposed to be serviced only by Pinion approved mechanics or Pinion themselves. And we'd like to keep it that way. So we will keep it here in case upon return we do need to see a mechanic sometimes. Other than that, my tools are quite simple. On the few keys that I do carry, there's always an Allen key to be found. I don't know uh, the specific size of this one, but always comes in handy. Then I have a Topeak multi-tool. I've been carrying and using this one since 2014, my first tour in the US. And it's a multi-tool. It has all the Allen keys that you might expect, everything I need for the Outback, and also some other handy tools uh, for different repairs and replacements, etc. Then we have the specialized um, mini air tool, I think it's called. This is a really handy small pump, um, does the job well, does what it's supposed to do. And then we have a baggie also from Specialized, it's a SWAT baggie, very handy for tools, which is full of different kinds of tools, um, mainly just clamps, different clamps for different things. Uh, we're taking Gear 8 silicone grease for when the belt runs a little dry. Then a uh, set of these things. What are they called? I don't know. And glue and patches for the, uh, the tubes that will be running inside the tires. There's some other spare little rings. Also for the Tangia stove. Some spare bolts. Socket cap, of course. Some uh, glue and some... Uh, WD repair kit from Gear 8 as well. Some zip ties, also a reusable one. And the pinion lock ring tool. This is quite a cool little item. It's supposed to be uh, able to click in to one of the uh, chain rings on the front of the gearbox so that you can take it out with a regular clamp tool. Very handy to have if you're running a pinion gearbox in the wild. Then I also have some spare cleats that came with the pedals of the bike and of course some tape. And that's about everything. And now it's nearly time to come to the point of the video, actually accessorizing the Outback. But just before we do that, I want to take you through the Gates spare belt that we're taking, the do's and don'ts. Very straightforward. Here are the don'ts. Don't squeeze it, don't pinch it, don't zip tie it. And now I'm going to show you the do's which is how to store a belt like this. It's uh, required a, a bit of a trick, but watch with me. You want to face one of your hands towards you and one of your hands away from you and just sort of fold it like that. And when you want to fold it out, you just want to use your fingers and take along and there it is. So one more time, here we go. One hand away from you and one hand towards you. And you just fold it. <laughs> and when we have to use it, which hopefully is never, you just take it out like that. One more time. Yep. That's it. Light, handy to store, easy to use. Okay, let's finally accessorize my Outback. Two main things. I'm going to be putting on the Tubus Logo Classic rack that I've been using for years. It's a super sturdy rack. It's a bit rusty, but it does the job. And we are going to be using and riding on the Schwalbe Smart Sam 29 inch tires, as well as use some of their tubes, in our case the Air Plus 29 inch. There's also the standard tube that you can get from their website, 100% recyclable, quite nice. And we're going to have the Aerothon tubes, these things are a modern marvel as a uh, spare backup, just in case the Air Plus doesn't keep up with our heavy riding. The good news is we are partnering with both Tubus and Schwalbe for 2022. 
as we really, really like their components and we look forward to riding with both of these. Okay, let's start with the rack. As I mentioned before, you're gonna need two of these M5 bolts and then you're also gonna need these M6 bolts for the lower end. And so these have been, uh, the, the screw thread has already been fixed, but you're gonna have to watch with the paint and all in case you're gonna use these M6 bolts on a uh, non-pre-installed rack. As you can see, now it's coming along pretty easily. Next up is the fork mount. And uh, these are the Ortlieb fork bag mounts. I'm just gonna mount it here on the lower end. And as I mentioned before, the bolts that you use for this need to be of different lengths to fit both the fork and the thickness added by the mount. And in my case, I'm using this uh, receiver bit, which is on the back end. And then this type of bolt, this is slightly different of an opening. Don't like them very much, but the shop didn't have another uh, type like this. It's fairly straightforward. It's just that you're gonna have to uh, puzzle a little bit like me in the shop. Try to find the right bolts of the right length for this to fit and work out. I'm now gonna install this bottle cage. I'm gonna put it right here down below. It's going to be very straightforward. A little bit of tightening. Now I'm going to use one of these uh, volley straps to get the bottle in there. Like so. And there we have it, installed. For the cockpit, I'm installing two things. One of which is the Wahoo Element Bolt. I had great fun last year using the Element Roam, the bigger brother. And I'm looking forward to using this one. It has a USB-C, which I'm a big fan of, a 15 hour battery, and generally all the same features as the Roam. And secondly, I have this flux light that I got as a gift from Becky in Sardinia. And while I could be mounting it down here, I'm not going to because there will be bags installed. So it's handy that this light has a little clip and you can just take it off and use it at camp to uh, bring light up on anything that might need it. Truth be told, we almost never ride in the dark, but for those rare days, it's gonna be good to have uh, some light. So I'm also installing a backlight. And there's the one more thing before installing the tires. I found this uh, bottle on the internet and it fits exactly in here into the uh, sink expedition cage which I'm super excited to use because I've never had a uh, storage place this big for water but as you can see that is 1500 milliliters not gonna run out of water anytime soon okay now that all the accessories are installed it's time to swap both tires and tubes and don't worry, these are new, they come standard, but I'm going to put them in storage for later use. I really like it that these bikes have through axles because it's literally as easy as to just unscrew the pin. And because there's no derailleur, there's no need to put anything in a certain setting or to uh, fiddle about with the chain. It's as easy as just lifting it out and taking the belt off. And the front is even easier. So like I mentioned before, I'll be installing these uh, SmartSam 29 inch tires. They are 57 millimeters thick. So to give us enough options uh, in terms of surface type, we can go on a lot of different trails and paths with these. And then I'm using the Air Plus 29 inch tubes. And these are heavier. They come in at about 300 grams per tube, which is a lot. But in this way, probably we won't ever have to think about patching a tube. And if we do, this is standard butyl rubber that can just be patched with any regular patch 
and a bit of uh, etching glue or whatever that's called. I'm also using a pump, a proper pump. If I'd be out on a trail, I probably wouldn't put new tires on because they're very stiff, so it's really difficult to get them on. And you need a lot of air to get the beads into the rim properly, and this won't do it. Hence, I'm using this one. That's my recommendation. New tires, install them at home, much easier. By the way, I watched a, uh, a park tool video, proper instructions on how to install the new tire. And I'm gonna link it below because I really recommend it in case this is your first time doing it or maybe you don't have so much experience like me changing tires fully. Uh, it's a really great video. I don't know if I showed this in the Sardinia episode, but to get a new tire in, you don't actually always need one of these, the tire levers. Sam taught me a trick in Sardinia, and it's to start where the air plug comes out of the tube, start putting in the tire from there, and as soon as you have a little bit more grip, to then put it on the floor, Start pushing on top of the rubber, pull it down, and then bring it back up and try and just push it in there. It's my first try, don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> Nearly there, and boom. Pretty good now. Afterwards, you just wanna pump up the tube a lot, get a lot of air in there, so that the, uh, the beads that are along the tire pop into the rim. There we go. Okay, so I've also swapped out the front tire and tube, and that makes the outback about as ready as can be. There's one more thing to do before we wrap up the video and it's to weigh the final weight of the bike with accessories. Now you may see that I have taken off the alcohol bottle because there was still a little bit of alcohol in there. I weigh around 70.5 kilos. So let's see what this bike weighs, shall we? Here we go. 85.4 kilograms. Now that brings the bike in just around 15 kilograms and the weight is explainable with the steel frame and the pinion gearbox but generally I'm really happy with this amount of weight for such a reliable and low maintenance tank of a bicycle. And that route wraps it up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching along this video setting up this bike. Uh, before we go on our first trip in Spain I would like to post another what's on my bike type of video like I did last year. So do look out for that one. Feel free to subscribe if you like this video. Give it a little thumbs up. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Time for lunch.